Hello and uh, good morning for uh, those of you in Europe and uh, good afternoon uh, for those of you in uh, China and welcome to the EU SME Center webinar series. Uh, my name is Domenico Di Lielo. I will be your moderator today. I'm a research coordinator and VD project officer with the USME Center. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar and uh, today's presentation and today's topic will be on uh, the general aviation sector in uh, China. I understand the topic is of great interest and um, we are really, all of us are really looking forward to today's presentation. Therefore, I will just ask a few minutes of your time to briefly introduce you to the SME Center. Uh, I'm sure some of you already know that the SME Center is a project co-funded by the European Union and uh, implemented by a consortium of six partners. Our main aim is to assist SMEs in doing business in China. We do that through the provision of a comprehensive range of hands-on information, advices, trainings, as well as other supporting services. Today's presentation, today's webinar is going to last around one hour, 45 minutes presentation, and we will have a Q&A uh, session at the end of it. Uh, of course, as usual, we will try to uh, answer as many questions as possible. Perhaps we won't be able to answer all of them. Therefore, I will kindly ask you to submit the remaining questions or the question which remain unanswered uh, to our website through the Ask the Expert function. Uh, today's, I'm, I'm really happy to introduce you to the, today's speaker. Uh, is a person of great knowledge when it comes to uh, general aviation, especially here in China. Today's speaker is uh, Mr. Jan Friedrich. Mr. Friedrich is the chairman of the Light Aircraft Manufacturers Association in Europe and the vice president of Light Air Aircraft Association of the Czech Republic. Uh, Mr. Jan Friedrich has been involved in, uh, in the EU-China general aviation activities since 2012 and he has uh, also one of the he was also one of the main negotiators of the China Czech technical arrangement about validation of ultralight type certificates. In uh, 2014, uh, he contributed to the final report of the EU China civil aviation project and also provided support as general aviation technical expert in the inception phase of the EU China aviation partnership project. Um, I would like to hand over to the expert at this point. Just one quick note. We might be experiencing some difficulty, te technical difficulties uh, during today's presentation. Uh, for example, some delays in the, in the scrolling of the, of the presentation. Uh, perhaps the audio won't be perfect. It's mainly due to the fact that internet speed here now in China is, is really, really slow. Anyway, uh, I won't take uh, too much of your time and I really would like to uh, give the word and hand over to our expert today, Ms. Frederick. So, please. Hello, Domenico. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, everybody. I'm really pleased uh, to uh, have this opportunity to give you some of uh, my information about the general aviation uh, in uh, China. Uh, we will try to move to the next uh, slide with the agenda, where basically I will talk about the status of the general aviation in uh, China. Uh, I will talk uh, shortly about market size segments. I will also uh, we will have a look to some major barriers to enter the market. We will see the future outlook, updates on the Chinese regulation. Next one. EU-China negotiations, uh, and then I will uh, show you some useful contacts in uh, China general aviation sector. And then, then there will be some conclusion. Okay, let's have a look to the status of the general aviation in uh, China. Uh, first of all, the Chinese definition of general aviation is uh, slightly different uh, from the ICAO definition of general aviation. The main difference is basically that uh, the Chinese includes RL work uh, into the definition of general aviation, which means that the, their view of general aviation is more business side than the leisure or recreational side. Next one. Here, to understand the 
organization of uh, civil aviation in China. It's necessary to know about the Civil Aviation Administration of uh, China. This is this uh, abbreviation CAAC. And this is the actual chart which shows the different departments of the uh, uh, Civil Aviation Administration of China together with uh, the number of employees. So you can see that they are relatively low given the size of the uh, China. Uh, you can see here on the left hand side, this is the uh, headquarter which is uh, placed in Beijing and there are seven regional administration which basically performs the day-to-day -day, uh, practical uh, work. And there are two organizations uh, which are directly managed by CAC. It's this CAST which stands for China Academy of Civil Aviation Technology and the ATMB is Air Traffic Management Bureau. So this is the organization of uh, uh, CAC which is uh, important for your business because uh, you need to know to whom you need to talk which is sometimes quite difficult to find out. Next one. The next slide uh, when it will appear will show the map of China with uh, the centers of uh, uh, the regional uh, offices of uh, civil aviation uh, administration and uh, you can see it right now. Uh, and you can see that the main center is in Beijing, but then there are uh, regional offices in Shenyang, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Chengdu, Xi'an, and uh, Wulunguchi. Uh, basically depends where you want to be, do the business, in which part of China, then the regional uh, administration of CAC will be responsible for uh, uh, running uh, or overseeing your business. And it's also very important to have a good connection with uh, these local authorities, uh, otherwise your business will be quite slow. Next one. Now we need to talk a little bit uh, about the uh, GA market. Uh, so to have the perspective from the global point of view, we can say that there is about uh, 334,000 uh, certified uh, general aviation aircraft and there is about 700,000 general aviation pilots involved in general aviation. And you can see that uh, basically the general aviation is mostly that uh, on the left uh, side of the globe and it's much bigger than the commercial airline business. Next one. <clears throat> and also the general aviation is very diverse in the world. Remember these numbers because now we will have a quick look to the situation in Czech Republic. The reason why we look to Czech Republic is because I'm from the Czech Republic and also because the numbers in Czech Republic currently are quite similar to the numbers in China. So as you can see there is about 6,000 uh, ultralight aircraft and two two and a half thousand aircraft registered in uh, Czech Republic and we have about uh, 91 general aviation airports and total 180 airports uh, spread it across the uh, Czech uh, Republic. Next one. And we don't have any uh, restrictions for ultralight uh, aircraft. Given the size of the Czech Republic, you should remember that we have uh, 10 million uh, people and uh, when we move uh, to China, uh, the situation on the market is quite uh, different. Uh, first of all, the general aviation in China is uh, starting, uh, so this is giving uh, huge opportunities, but also the huge risks. The GA market in China does not exist in terms we know from the rest of the world. This means, and this is related to what I, uh, what I just said at the beginning, the different definition of general aviation and also that the Chinese are always thinking about general aviation from the point of view of manufacturing and transport, which from my point of view is uh, not uh, the huge part of the general aviation. Uh, to get some statistical data is difficult, but here I put some uh, top uh, numbers which I was able to gather and we will uh, look into them in the next uh, slide. But we can say that there is now about uh, uh, 1,975 aircraft, 2,085 PPL licenses, 506 port pilot licenses and there is 286 uh, civil airports and it's a potentially big market. 
basically, uh, next one, uh, basically remember the, the numbers from uh, the first uh, three slides about the global picture and the check numbers. So you can see that the numbers are quite similar to check numbers. Of course, if we look to the uh, data uh, in more details, we can find out that as of uh, uh, 31st December, there was uh, 1,975 general aviation aircraft, including business jets and helicopters. Out of them, there was 1,403 fixed wing aircraft, and 486 were used for training. And, and this is very interesting, there is just 145 private aircraft which flew 13,000 flight hours. Out of them, there is 114 airplanes and 31 helicopters. But, surprisingly, I have been told that there is about 2,000 illegal aircraft in China. And then I was really very surprised how it is possible to have illegal flying in China. And I was explained that uh, basically if you have a good connection to local government or local military airport, it is possible to fly, in quotes, illegally, not registered with uh, CAC. But there is a huge tendency to uh, actually change that and to prosecute these people who are flying uh, illegally. Uh, my recommendation on that would be that first it's necessary to create friendly system and then this number of illegal uh, planes will go down. Here on a, on a graph, and next slide, you can see the development or sp spread of the private aircraft around uh, China, different uh, regions. So you can see that, for example, in Northwest, uh, Northeast and Xinjiang, there is no uh, private aircraft. So most of them are in North China, where basically the Beijing is. And you can see the portion of the helicopters. Next one. Uh, and now we look to the different segment, uh, to the pilot side. So there was 39,881 valid Chinese pilot licenses. Of course, this number is quite high, but you should be aware that uh, almost 21,000 are commercial pilot licenses. So everything in China concerning fly, flying until now is mostly uh, focused on commercial air transport. There was 2,085 pi uh, private pilot licenses, uh, 506 sport pilot licenses, which basically this sport pilot license is also necessary if you want to fly ultralight aircraft. And interestingly, uh, China is quite uh, fast uh, moving on also on the UAVs or UAS or RPS. As depends how we want to call it. They have already issued 244. Um, unmanned uh, vehicles uh, pilot certificates. And there is 14 domestic and, uh, next one, and 27 overseas flight schools with total capacity of 6,700 students, mostly for CPL, and there is 910 flight instructors. And the uh, next uh, slide shows uh, another important segment of general aviation, that's airports, because without airports you have nowhere where you can start. Currently, there is approximately 286 civil airports and uh, 400 other airports. And China plans to build uh, 2,000 general aviation airports by the end of 2030. You can see on the pictures that uh, on the left-hand pictures, there are the major airports in China. On the right-hand pictures, next one, there is uh, uh, the planned uh, layout uh, for the new airports. Uh, within the China, and you can see that most of the Chinese airports are concentrated to uh, north and, and east uh, of the uh, country. Uh, the, another part of the general aviation business are the companies, which is in China very important because without general aviation company, you cannot uh, practically own the private uh, uh, airplane. That's why there's so few of them. So, as of uh, uh, end of the, uh, 2014, there was 164 uh, general aviation and small transportation businesses involving uh, 2,191 pilots and 1,174 aircraft. Uh, the GA company and small transportation uh, airlines are classified uh, um, based on their operational characteristics. There is uh, 119 uh, companies uh, type of A, 
which are CCR 91. This is the regulation which runs uh, general aviation uh, operation companies, mainly engaged in air operations. Nine type B, which is a CCR 135 operation companies, mainly engaged in small scale transportation, including air commuting and commercial air charter business. 23 type C, which is the mixture of uh, A and B. Uh, 12 type D, which is uh, again the mix mixture of the uh, A and B uh, together with uh, possibility uh, to have a CCR 141 training, and there is only one type E, which is the, again the mixture of the operation of A and D. Uh, as you can see, and we will talk this a little bit later, uh, the numbering is quite familiar to the FA system of the rules. Next one. The next uh, picture, when it will come, oh, we are quite quick now, uh, is showing the comparison of the number of companies in past three years. So you can see that there is clearly a trend of uh, growing of the type A companies, and the rest is somehow uh, stable. Uh, next one. Now we go to the to the difficult question of the growth demands. That's why I put a question mark to this uh, graph, because yes, it is anticipated that if the general aviation in China will be uh, moving uh, uh, towards growth, which means all this depends on access to the lower airspace as a basic uh, condition of any general aviation business in China, there will be a huge, de a huge demand for general aviation aircraft, pilots, airports, services and everything what is related to general aviation. But at the moment it's very uh, difficult to predict how this will develop. So the red uh, shows very fast stable uh, uh, growth. The, the blue actually shows that it can actually be for the quite long time uh, quite slow and then it will explode. But of course there could be a situation that uh, the the decision of the Chinese government will be such that it will uh, not allow too much private uh, flying and then the development uh, would be uh, much slower. If we will be talking, uh, next one, in the terms of uh, uh, time, I don't expect that there will be huge uh, uh, or, or that the, we should be measuring the time of the progress in like five to ten years. It's not. I don't expect any quick win uh, solution in the next uh, few uh, years. Uh, what are the, uh, the major barriers to enter, enter the uh, market? Anybody of you who ever been in China would probably agree with me that the culture in China is uh, completely different from our, our culture. And this, of course, brings uh, uh, some uh, problems if you are not uh, respecting certain things. So, for example, uh, personal contact is preferred. You should be ready to travel to China many times. You should not expect that you will be able to make any business over the phone or over the email. For Chinese really prefer personal contact. And of course, if uh, you want to make a business there uh, which basically will involve some sort of uh, level of uh, real cooperation, then your boss or, or the owner of the company should be prepared to invest a lot of time for traveling and for negotiation with uh, Chinese partners. The other interesting thing is, which surprised me, was that nothing is as, as it is agreed at the first time. So in the negotiation you must be patient and consistent and you really need to think in advance, so before you actually uh, go to China. I call this, uh, uh, this uh, situation that you must do your homework at home, uh, and I will be talking about that a little bit uh, later. Of course, there is a huge language barrier, you know, don't expect that English or any other language is uh, too much useful in China. I'm, I was surprised that basically even on a, on a quite high level you need to speak, uh, you need to have a Chinese interpreter who will help you and who you should test him somewhere that his translation is correct, especially for business kind of negotiation and also aviation related terminology because sometimes 
uh, the translation is could cause a lot of difficulties. You definitely need the brochures in Chinese. Uh, without uh, Chinese brochures or information in Chinese, you will not be able to do too much uh, business because really the, the the general knowledge of English is quite uh, limited. And of course, without a reliable Chinese partner, you would not accomplish nothing. Basically, as I said at the beginning, personal contact is preferred. You must be prepared sometimes for heavy drinking and to making that the Chinese partners will be testing you uh, before they will start to make uh, business with you. And this takes uh, time. Definitely, it's not possible to do it in uh, one week or, or even one month. Basically, if you make a business less than one year, it's a little bit suspicious. Usually, it takes uh, longer. And of course, if we go to the uh, to the aviation side of the business, the, the, the major barrier is the absence of the bilateral aviation safety agreement, so-called BASA, between European Union and China. Basically, these documents uh, sets the procedures under which you can actually validate or, or, or somehow recognize the work which is done on both sides. These documents is under discussion, but at the moment I think it's coming becoming more a political problem than a technical problem, and I don't expect that it will be signed uh, soon. Even this, there are some announcements uh, which are very optimistic, but uh, my uh, one of the lessons which I learned in China was that if somebody says 2017, in reality it will be 2020. So you should really count on it and don't expect uh, uh, big progress on that. But basically this is the major obstacle for type certificated products to be uh, sold or to be uh, to make some business in, in China. Uh, another barrier is the legislation, which basically the access to the lower airspace is still limited. They are talking about it for almost 10 years, but actually uh, there is some visible uh, process because, for example, in the past, if you want to fly general aviation plane, you need to ask one month in advance for flight plan, then later two weeks, and now the situation is that in many places it's enough to ask uh, to put the flight plan uh, three o'clock uh, the day before. Uh, but again, this is uh, still uh, complicated, and without the access to the lower airspace, there is no general aviation. Uh, Again, the GA market does not exist in terms we know in, uh, from uh, Europe, so any statistic, any habits, any usual things uh, don't work at the moment because the market really does not exist. And if we want to succeed uh, in China, we must help them to build the, the market. And also the, the part of that is that the aviation structure, next one, in China is complicated and the work is uh, relatively uh, slow. Again, uh, this is related to the fact that the personal contact is preferred. So if you send an email, you could wait for a month and nothing happened. If you send an email and then somebody else, your Chinese partner, will check that email actually arrived, the things can move uh, quicker. And here I just put for your, for those who've never been in China, this is the Kafuk uh, uh, Guanghan. Uh, basically, one of the biggest flight schools, which produce about 1,000 uh, commercial air transport pilots every year. But this they consider as a general aviation. So you can see that that uh, the, the airfield, planes, and everything is a little bit out of the proportion of uh, classical general aviation uh, for sm small and medium enterprises we know uh, here in Europe. And of course, their expectation is, is also different. Next one. And also here on the picture you can see that the visibility is in some of the parts of China not very good and uh, definitely VFR flying could be a little challenge. So now we will have a look uh, to the uh, how uh, to to the future. Next one, yes, okay. This is the update on the Chinese regulations. If you want to start a business in China, it's very important to know the legislative environment. And the legislative environment for uh, aviation is actually on this uh, picture, which uh, 
On top, there is a civil aviation law of the People's Republic of China, which is developed by the National People's Congress, issued by the President. So this is like our basic uh, regulation in uh, Europe. Then we have uh, these two regulations issued by the State Council. But what is important for us is this third la layer, which is the issued by CAC. This is the China Civil Aviation Regulation. You can see that that's why the, the abbreviation is CC. R because uh, CCAR uh, because that's the abbreviation of the China Civil Aviation Regulations and below uh, there is a, a department of the Civil Aviation Administration of China which is called Aircraft Airworthiness Certification Department this is this AAD which issues the airworthiness procedures management document and advisory uh, circulars next one and here I make uh, some uh, selection of the useful uh, regulation, Chinese useful regulation for uh, uh, civil, uh, for general aviation. So on the operational side, it's definitely if you have some intention to do any business in China, you need to look to CCR 91 and CCR 135, uh, which basically runs the general aviation and the uh, small uh, aircraft commercial transport operators. For the flight, especially for the flight school, CCR 141 or 142 for flying center. And of course, for the airworthiness, uh, there is a CCR 21 uh, uh, Revision 3, uh, Certification Procedures of Civil Aviation Products and Parts. And for the bigger planes, this is CCR 23 Revision 3 airworthiness standards for normal utility aerobatic and commuter category airplanes. Basically, this is like our part 21 or, or part 23, so uh, you those who, who do any business of, with the aircraft design, you should look to these uh, uh, standards. Uh, I think we have most of them in English. So it's possible to, to, to have a look. And uh, as you can see also from the numbering uh, next one, I already said that the current Chinese uh, regulation mostly copies FAA uh, regulation. And here we have uh, also the rules for the maintenance. Okay, then that's a CCR 63. So this would be like our part M or part M light, which we have now, or the other one are uh, CCR 145 and CCR 147, uh, next one. So these are the rules. And then, of course, it's very info important uh, to have also knowledge of the airworthiness procedures because here there is actually describes the practical way how the things uh, are uh, done in China. Very important uh, one is this first AP2101, which is the validation procedure for imported uh, civil aviation products and parts. That is basically the basic uh, procedure how to validate the type certificate from Europe in China and receive so-called uh, VTC, va uh, validated type certificate. Uh, and the, the others shows the, the type certification, certification procedures, uh, production certification and surveillance procedures, and airworthiness certification procedures. And there are many, many other. Next one. Uh, now we need to, you need to know a little bit about uh, EU-China general aviation negotiations, which is, uh, as I already said, one of the uh, buyers to enter the, the Chinese market. This is this bilateral aviation safety agreement, which is essential for any aviation business between Europe uh, and China. And as I already said, it's very difficult to predict when this uh, process will be uh, actually finished because uh, the process works in a way that uh, the Chinese will familiarize with European regulations and procedures, and the uh, ASA will familiarize with uh, the Chinese uh, procedures. Usually, they pick up the, uh, the projects, and on that projects, they 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 will uh, verify the understanding of each side how the business is run. And I, as I said, 
and I repeat it again, for me seems to be it's more a political problem than a technical problem. But uh, for your information, uh, China has BASA with uh, United States, so our United, uh, um, our American friends are in a little bit of advantage on that. This actually means that that uh, because there is no BASA, Chinese at the moment are saying no BASA, no certification. So they usually don't accept any application for uh, certification of uh, new products. In the past, there were some so-called working arrangements, which could be on a bilateral level or company level, which basically uh, sets the procedure for specific products. It could be on a bilateral level, on a, the government level, and on a company level. For example, our uh, bilateral technical arrangement for uh, the, the validation of the type certificates of uh, Czech uh, built ultralight and Chinese built ultralight is exactly on that level. But anyway, it took us more than two years uh, before we actually persuaded, even with the help of EASA, uh, th that we persuaded CAC that actually Annex 2 aircraft are not covered by BASA uh, and that we can uh, solve the situation bilaterally. And you can have a working arrangement on a company level. In the past, I know that there, there are few companies which have this sort of arrangements. Uh, usually, nowadays, Chinese have a tendency to uh, sort of press the companies to help them to get the BASA so they, they are uh, a little bit reluctant to accept uh, new applications for certification. The other option how to get to China uh, market is actually to sell the intellectual property to Chinese companies and then they will do it uh, from their side. Okay, uh, the, there, are, there is an important uh, EU-China aviation partnership project. Uh, the abbreviation is uh, APP, which is basically the successor of the EU CCAP, which was mentioned in the beginning by Domenico. It's a European uh, project of the European Connect, uh, Commission, which uh, is focused on the small and medium enterprises, uh, which is also the part of it is focused on the small and medium enterprises. It started recently. It is the project for five years, from 2015 to 2020. The European Union is puts uh, 10 million euro into it. It is uh, managed by EASA and implemented together with uh, CAC. You can find out more on this uh, website, and also uh, on uh, uh, there will be some section session in Aero uh, Friedrichshafen. So stay tuned. The focus on these activities, uh, airworthiness, environmental protection, ATM, ANS and airports, economic policy and regulation, aviation safety and security, general aviation. Basically, it works that uh, in a way that uh, we, uh, because I was a part of that, uh, that uh, project preparation, we visited China, we talked to all departments of civil aviation uh, administration of China and we were trying to find a common project and there will be also a project for general aviation which uh, will be held in uh, one bit, will, short bit will be in Aerofriedrichshafen and then there will be some uh, seminar in held in China probably in October or December of uh, this year and there is still opportunities to participate in this project, uh, but you should really have some idea, which is not just for, uh, which is more general uh, uh, term than, than the, the one which is uh, particular for your company. Next one. So, what are the opportunities for uh, business in, in uh, China? Uh, as I already said, for EASA type certificated products, everything depends on BASA, except if you don't sell the whole project to, to Chinese. Uh, then there is a possibility of direct sales of general aviation aircraft from uh, European manufacturers. Uh, actually, the Chinese are at the moment on shopping, and basically they go all around the world. And uh, uh, in the past, there was a lot of uh, you know, sort of worry that uh, there will be an issue with uh, copying of products. I personally think that Chinese don't need to copy anything. They will just go and buy 
and you can see that uh, already there are some uh, huge Chinese invest in investments uh, in the aviation sector all around the world. There's a possibility for technology transfers, power plant and instrument solutions, training of pilots and ground staff. This is the, one of the biggest topics because, uh, especially for general aviation, they do not have too much uh, uh, training and they need much more people for general aviation. Uh, airfield solution, air navigation services and ground systems. Another huge topic could be the helicopter emergency medical services uh, because there will be this Winter Olympic uh, Games in Beijing and uh, really the HEMS doesn't work at the moment in China uh, quite well. So there is a big potential for European uh, companies. And of course, I didn't put here, there is another opportunity. Uh, China is quite developed in drones, so there could be a quite useful cooperation between uh, the European companies and uh, Chinese company in this drone sector. And of course, there is also need for uh, more publications like uh, aeronautical charts, procedures, magazines, and so on. Next one. Okay, here I just put together uh, some useful contact uh, in uh, China, uh, for China from the European side. And this is again related to the, to the fact uh, which I called uh, making the homework. Before you go to China, you must do your research and selection. This can save you a lot of time and also a lot of money. So I would recommend to contact the EU SME Center. Uh, I would also uh, consider to protect your intellectual property rights before you go to China so you can use IPR SME help desk. Uh, you have the link uh, here. Uh, where you could be surprised that uh, it's not, sometimes it's not so expensive to protect your uh, rights, but you must do it before you come to China because their perception of these things is once you are in China, uh, who comes first, uh, have it. Uh, I, I would also strongly recommend you to contact your commercial department of your embassy. So if your country has an uh, embassy in China, definitely talk to your commercial department. They could have a lot of useful uh, contacts. And it also helps uh, if the embassy is supporting you because actually the government support for making business in China is very, very important. Uh, and also uh, you can contact the EU-China uh, APP project manager Stefan Batex in EASA. He was living in China and he has a huge experience in, in uh, China, so definitely I would uh, recommend to uh, contact him. And of course, you can contact anybody whom you know who have been in China, who did some business in China. It's really important to gather this information before you make a decision to move to China. Next one. And now we come to the other part, which is the contacts in, in China. So here I put some information about the contacts in China. Of course, the first place where you need to look for information is Civil Aviation Administration of China. They have a part of the web which is in English and you can find some useful information there. I would strongly uh, uh, recommend you to, to read this annual report of Chinese Allied Pilot Development. Don't be afraid that it's called Chinese Allied pilot development, there is a lot of useful information, some of them I already used in my presentation, about um, mostly about the pilot. There are some other documents, but if you go to these sites, you will see uh, more, more of them. Uh, there are two more organizations in China, which I consider to be important for general aviation, and that's AOPA, China. Uh, they have uh, their own exhibition for specially focused on training, but Alpine China also have a tendency to uh, do some certification work. So it's a little bit uh, different from Alpa traditional Alpa. And uh, but as a difference, you can see it. Alpa in China has about 3,000 uh, members, and only 300 of them are pilots. So again, it's a, it's a general aviation in China is different. There is another important organization which is called Aerosports Federation of China and basically they run the, the, uh, the 
so-called general aviation activities related, uh, ranging from aeromodeling up to the parachuting, uh, including everything. The, they have a delegation from uh, CAC for administration of the pilot licenses. So again, that's important organization. And I would also like to point your attention to this uh, bi-monthly GA magazine, which is called Flying China. It's actually uh, the publisher is uh, from Germany, is Willy uh, Take, which is who is uh, also um, publishing this uh, leisure aviation uh, magazine with all the information about aircraft and equipment. That issue also exists in in Chinese Chinese version. But uh, basically, from the advertisement point of view, uh, this is, from my point of view, the only GA magazine I know in China. There are some few uh, others, but uh, I would recommend to consider this one uh, as a, uh, to have, definitely to have a uh, look. Next one. So now we are in conclusion. So I think uh, we have three more minutes. So I'm quite happy that we uh, managed to uh, tackle these uh, delays with the slides. Uh, so the conclusion from my point of view is that the success of the general, uh, general aviation in China depends on the legislative environment in China. Uh, I think it is necessary to create a solid foundation for China's general aviation so that young people can start flying with simple machines and gradually move up in their aviation careers according to their needs. I think this is important because basically that airmanship or that aviation generation is missing in China. It, this has no uh, real history of, of the private flying or general aviation flying and if we want to have a a successful business with China, we must help them to build this, their system. Actually, we must give them advice, but it's up to them to build their own system, because that's the way how it can uh, work. At the present, the Chinese general aviation focus mostly on manufacturing, but the general aviation is not just manufacturing. Uh, you should realize that uh, maybe you have seen some of these uh, general aviation parks and many, basically almost every city wants to produce their own general aviation plane because they will have their own general aviation park, but they are using these words and you don't, uh, but they don't know, most of them, they don't know the real meaning of these words and if you see some of these projects, those projects are really far bigger than actually is appropriate for, for this kind of uh, activity at this uh, stage. Uh, so I would basically finish my presentation uh, with uh, saying that, of course, in China there is a big potential. If it's done right, within 10 to 15 years, China could become the biggest uh, aviation market in the world. But, and that but means uh, if it is done right. So if there will be no movement on the access to the uh, uh, lower airspace, there will be no uh, real general uh, aviation. So, thank you very much, and I think we go and now for definitely the Q and A session. Well, first of all, thank you, uh, Jan. I think the presentation was uh, extremely useful, extremely clear, and you actually managed to answer quite a few of the questions our attendees asked during the presentation. We quite, we still have quite a few. Uh, left and uh, if it's okay for you I will submit the first one which I think is very useful for everybody to know what are the major aviation exhibitions here in China oh the major uh, aviation exhibitions in China there are a lot of them basically every bigger city now starting to have some general aviation exhibitions. Um, you should be careful to which one you go. Again, you ask before you go because sometimes this, uh, the level or the standard of some of these exhibitions is, is uh, not what we know in Europe. And you should be prepared that most of them does not include any flying. Mm -hmm. But the biggest uh, the exhibition is in uh, every uh, second year in Zhuhai is uh, Aero China exhibition. This is more or less like uh, uh, Paris Le Bourget. 
this kind of exhibition where you can find everything from uh, microites up to the Airbus 380 and uh, military. So this is, and Zhuhai is interesting interesting place. There is another impo important exhibition which was this year, so, uh, sorry, which was 2015. Uh, that's a Xi'an exhibition uh, where there is some flying on the uh, on the uh, on this show, but part of it is in a big halls inside the town, and the airport is about two hours drive from the uh, exhibition. So this is specific. There are there is, as I already mentioned, this uh, exhibition of uh, AOPA, which is mostly focused on training, and it's uh, also there are some uh, presentation sections. But there you could have a problem with the with the language because it's mostly focused on the Chinese uh, Chinese uh, market. Great. That, there that... are there are of course there are some other exhibitions in Beijing and in Shanghai, uh, but this is changing year by year because some of them are uh, finishing and some of them are starting. So. And I know that uh, Aerofridrichshafen will be announcing some cooperation with uh, one of the Chinese uh, uh, exhi exhibitor places, so watch uh, for that in Aerofridrichshafen. Okay, that, that's great. That's very very useful information. And actually, uh, some of the uh, of the exhibition that you mentioned will be featured in the soon to be published exhibition report by the USME Center. This is a news I want to give to our uh, attendees. So moving on to the next uh, to the next question, we have um, one of our attendees asked whether the the small drones. Uh, the unmanned drones uh, for commercial use uh, are to be considered part of the general aviation classification here in China. So, are they submitted to the to the same regulation? Yes, I think that China has or is developing uh, the uh, the drones regulation. And actually, I would say that the China is uh, more advanced than than Europe. I never seen such a big drones. Uh, like in, in China, and I and they are using it for, for example, for crop spraying or for many other activities. So, so definitely the drones uh, market is uh, also a hot issue for for uh, CAC. Okay. Uh, because for example, yes. uh, for example, in in they, they ask us during the during this uh, perception phase of the APP, you know, what is our experience with the drone accident investigation? Mm -mm. You know, which is completely new, new subject uh, to in 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 these uh, topics. So definitely drone markets, and you can see that they already have uh, uh, the uh, the pilot licenses for for drones. Mm. Uh, there is a section of, in that book which I I recommended in the previous slide, which is devoted to the to the drones. So okay, so there's plenty of information our attendees can. Uh, can learn more from. Um, moving on to the to the next slide, um, it seems to understand that um, there are opportunities for SMEs in the general aviation sector, and perhaps there will be more of them. Uh, it, it, it's, this mostly depends whether or not the reforms in the lower air, airspace actually will take place in the next few years in China. Uh, so at, at this present stage, I see listed uh, amongst the, 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 the opportunities you put in one of the slides, uh, the pilot training. Do you, how big an opportunity do you think it is? And is there any company in Europe already doing that that you are aware of? Uh, yes, the company I know that it's it's trying to do that is is a uh, is a uh, uh, the Czech company F Air, which is the biggest flight school in in Czech Republic. They already have four branches in China or trying to establish them, and it's going slowly. They are working on that on on about five years now. Uh, I think that uh, as you can see from the numbers, uh, uh, the the sector of general aviation pilot is missing. So there, if the things will be developing as we want, there will be a big need uh, for the uh, general aviation pilots. And I think that uh, for European uh, flight school, there could be opportunity to, to transfer their uh, know-how or knowledge to, to China. I, I think at the beginning it could be training in, in, uh, here in Europe, 
but in the future, I think the, the, the way to go is, is to have uh, the training in directly in China, because Chinese already are sending a lot of uh, young people to uh, flight schools in Canada, Australia, United States, but they have a problem that uh, uh, when the people are there, they usually don't have a huge tendency to go back. So I think the way uh, with the training for general aviation in China is to train them in, in China. Okay, great. Uh, we have last two questions. The first will be, uh, where can we go to get more details and information about the Aviation Partnership Project? Is anyone we can contact? I think you mentioned this before, actually, during your presentation. Uh, yes, I think uh, we you should uh, you should uh, uh, you should uh, contact the EASA, uh, Stefan Bartex. The the link is in in the in the presentation. And as far as I know, there will be a uh, dedicated uh, one-hour presentation where also the Chinese Civil Aviation Administration will be. This will be on Wednesday, 12th of uh, April, on Aerofreedis Hafen from uh, 6 to 5 o'clock afternoon. Okay, great. And the last will be, how, how do you actually see the future of general aviation in, uh, in China? Uh, as I already uh, said a couple of times, everything depends on uh, on uh, the legislative uh, environment and what Chinese government wants. You know, because uh, flying, as each of us know, is uh, requires a lot of freedom, and you cannot have that freedom overnight. It should go step by step to move uh, to the safe uh, aviation environment. So. Uh, if the access to the lower space will gradually be, be open, which is going step by step because they have uh, some zones where you, you can uh, start flying, if they will change their mind and they will think that the flying is not just transport, then we can have a, we can have a quite successful uh, general aviation, as I said, but the, in 10, 15 years, it will, I don't think it will be uh, quicker because really the the tradition is missing there. They have a good uh, uh, record on a commercial air transport. The flying with Chinese uh, airliners is is safe, uh, you know. But but for the general aviation, I think this is a big uh, step. Uh, it's just to be made. It mm. didn't happen yet. Sure, sure. Um, if it's okay for you, we have a really a one last minute question, um, which I want to submit to you. Is uh, which department in CAAC is in charge of regulation for ground support equipment for general aviation airfields? Uh, one more, sorry, I didn't catch uh, well, exactly. Which department in the CAAC is in charge of regulation for ground support equipment? Uh, sorry, that's uh, not directly my uh, okay. level of expertise. I just, no, I will just, uh, I, I, I'm going back in my presentation to have a look uh, to the departments and I will be... Uh, it's okay. You know, the, the thing is, if you have, if you need anything from 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 uh, CAC, the best way is to contact uh, anyway the international department uh, mm. of uh, uh, no, department on, of CAC, and they they will give you advice where to go because anyway. Uh, with the foreign contacts, usually you go through them. So sure. I would recommend to go. But there is a department of airport. Mm -hmm. the, you know, there is. Yes, perhaps that's the department to to contact. But I, I think you gave you gave link to the CAC and uh, uh, perhaps what. Yeah, the, the uh, other important the other other important uh, thing which which needs to be known and this I mentioned that that this is this complicated structure that sometimes and especially on the airport they told us that one company is is uh, responsible for for design of the of the airport another one is for building and another one is for equipment mm -hmm. and sometimes you can have a strange interactions that actually uh, you will find out that they build a tower and from tower you don't see anything because uh, in meantime somebody else planned to make a big hangar somewhere so you should 
actually be be careful uh, for for that. But I would recommend to go through the international affairs okay. department. Okay, perfect, understood. Well, thank you very much, Jan. I think it's uh, enough for today. It was all very interesting and insightful. Uh, thanks also uh, to the attendees, of course, for staying with us. Uh, in the end, I would just like to remind to our attendees that next week we are going to have another webinar on green food, a uh, topic of great interest at the moment. Uh, we also have a few publications coming out, as I mentioned before, the exhibition report, where you will find exhibitions from the general aviation as well as many other sectors. So stay tuned with the SME Center. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Ian. And thank to all the companies in Europe and in China. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye-bye.